Allah Ta'ala wa nastaghfiru wa asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarikalah wa asyhadu anna sayyidina Muhammadan abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluh sallallahu alaihi wa ala alihi wa zawajihi wa sahbi tabi khulafa ar-rashidin mahadin min ba'di wa zammati ala tahqiq khuzam min alamati khulafa rasul ala tahqiq Umar al-Mu'minin Hazrat Abu Bakar Umar Usman wa Ali wa ala baqdi sahbi tabi'in ridwanullah ta'ala alaihi majma'in ya ayuhal mu'minul hazirun Taqullah Ta'ala wa ta'inna Allah hamal ladhina taqal ladhina hum muhsinun Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala shurafi wa anbiya mursalin Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the Universes All praises are due to Allah, who is the first, the last, the manifest, the hidden The one who has might and power over all things all praises are due to Allah, the Lord of the Kaaba. All praises are due to Allah who made Hazrat Ibrahim his Halil, his friend. All praises are due to Allah who sent his Habib, his beloved one, Sayyidina Muhammad wasalam, from the lineage of Hazrat Ismail. Wasalam. And may all peace and blessings be upon the chosen of Allah, the Prophet of Allah, the Messenger of Allah, the Beloved of Allah the servant of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad wasalam, and upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Osman al-Ghani, and Hazrat Ali al-Muntaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya ayuhal mu'minun, O believers, we are in the blessed month of Hajj, Zul Hijjah. We are in the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah, the most sacred days of the year that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing upon them in the Holy Quran. Hajj is the fifth pillar of Islam. It is a part of being a Muslim. It is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon those who have the ability that they go on the Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, at least once in your life, you must come and visit my house, the Baytullah. That house, that Kaaba, it is a physical place. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is not bound by time and space. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of time and space. He is not sitting inside that Kaaba. Astaghfirullah. But he is ordering us to go on the Hajj to make us to move symbolically for his sake from one place to another. Hajj is not just to circle the Kaaba, to go to Muzdalifa, to go to Arafah, to do Sa'i, to throw stones at the Jamarat. If a person does only these actions without understanding the meaning behind them, his Hajj is going to be empty. Hajj. It is a practice for death and qiyama. Hajj, it is a sacrifice of the nafs. Hajj, it is returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are following the path of Allah's friends, following the path of the beloved of Allah, who have taught what the true Hajj is. Once a man came to Hazrat Junaid al Baghdadi Qadasullah Sir after performing Hajj. And Hazrat Junaid asked him, Did you really do the Hajj? The man answered, Yes, Effendim. Hazrat Junaid asked, When you left your home for the Hajj, did you make a promise that you would give up your sins? The man said, No, Effendim. I never even thought of that that I would give up from all my wrong actions. Hazrat Junaid said, then you didn't even step out for the Hajj. While you were traveling to the Hajj and stopping during the night, did you ever think of getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The man said, no. Hazrat Junaid said, then you didn't even travel to the Kaaba. You didn't even visit it. Tell me, when you put on your ihram, 
and left your regular clothes? Did you make intention to leave your evil habits and your wrong thinkings? No, Effendim. Hazrat Vijanayt started to get Jalal and he said, then you did not even wear your ihram. When you stood in Arafat and you were begging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, did you feel like you were standing in his divine presence and seeing him? No, Effendim. Nothing like that. Hazrat Junaid became even more Jalal and he said, Well, when you came to Muzdalifa, did you at least promise that you would give up the wrong desires of your body? No, Effendim. I didn't do that. I didn't even think of that. Hazrat Junaid said, Then you did not go to Muzdalifa either. Tell me, when you made tawaf, did you see the divine beauty of Allah? No, Ya Shaykh, I didn't even see such a thing. Then you didn't make tawaf. When you met Sa'i, when you ran between the hills of Safa and Marwa, did you understand the importance of why you are running? No, Ya Shaykh. Then you didn't make Sa'i either. When you met Qurban at the end, did you make Qurban of your nafs for the sake of Allah? Effendim, I didn't do that. I didn't do anything like that. Then you didn't make qurban. When you threw stones at the Jamrat, did you make intention to get rid of your evil companions and friends and your wrong desires? No. Hazrati Junaid said to the man with regret, then you didn't throw the stones. Go back and do your Hajj again. The way I told you, so that your Hajj will at least be a little bit like Hazrat Ibrahim's Hajj, whose faith and sincerity Allah remembered in the Holy Quran saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ibrahim, who carried out most faithfully the commands of his Lord. Sadaqallahul Azim. That is the Hajj that we should be seeking to perform. But today, Majority are making the Hajj to become a show. The Hajj has become a competition to see who can do the most luxury, who can make the biggest performance. Hajj became a platform for fame, for business. They made the Kaaba to look so small, so that people will be busy with the dunya outside and forget the Baytullah, even though they are in Mecca. That is the reality of today. We must be servants of Allah. The Hajj is a symbol of our being servants, running to his house, saying, here I am, your Lord. Here I am. Here I am. There is no doubt in you. Here I am. Truthfully, the praise and the blessings and the kingdom is yours. There is no doubt that I have in you. A servant cannot have two masters. Either we are the servants of Allah or we are the servants of our ego, our nafs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is service means that we are concentrating on Him, not on our ego. Concentrating on Allah means to concentrate on what He has ordered us to do. To obey Allah, it is not difficult because obedience of Allah is what our spirit it wants. When we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, peace and satisfaction comes to our heart. But to run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is difficult. Because when we run away from Allah, we are going against the fitr, the original innocence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with. We cannot think we can live a disobedient life and then get away with it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set down a law for mankind. And that law is Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un Verily we come from Allah and to Him is our return. Every living creature is going to experience death. The only human who has not was Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And the awliya are teaching that one of the big reasons for his return is so that he too will pass through death. Even the beloved of Allah, 
Sayyidina al-awalil wal-ahirin, Sayyidina Muhammad wasalam, he went through that. How does foolish man think he will escape? We must think every day that we are on Azrael's list of names. If we are in gaflat of that, then our faith is shaky. Azrael will visit 150,000 people today. We must think that we are one of them. If we forget that, or if we think we have a guarantee to stay alive, then shaitan will definitely trick us. He will trick us by saying, you have such a long life. Run for dunya. Run for your family. Run for your business. Run for your car. You will have time to be Allah's servant when you get old. We were not sent to this life for money or for our families. We were sent to know Allah and to worship Allah. And knowing Allah, it is the condition to worshipping Him. As our Shaykh, Sahib al Sayyid Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibrisiya Rabbani Qadasullah Sir is teaching us first, you have to know Allah to be able to worship Allah. If you are not knowing Allah, then you are not worshipping Allah. You are building some kinds of idols to yourselves, and usually that is the man's ego. The ego will tell us that this world, it is forever. But this world, it is temporary. This world is a place of preparation. This world is a place to get ready for Ahirat. And we have to keep strongly in our hearts that we, we can be taken any moment from this temporary life to the real life. Don't get tricked to say, I am so young, I have plenty of time. Look at our cemetery. So many young people, they are buried in there. But the disease of 21st century people is that even the old people, they are saying, I have so much time. And even the elderly are running after this world. Oh believers, this life is given to prepare for Ahirat, for the hereafter life. And when Azrael comes, the book is closed, no more chance. In the old days, people used to run to leave good deeds behind. They would run to leave good children. They would run to leave dergahs and charities that would write good deeds for them even after they passed so that they get the rewards. But today, people are leaving evil that continues to write for them. They leave their inheritance to bad people who use it for evil, who use it against Islam. And that evil will add to their punishment even after they die. May Allah let us to leave only the good ones. We want to be in safety. If we want that, we cannot start by saying, I am safe. No, you cannot. We have to look for safety areas. We have to look for the dangers and we have to run away from them into the safety areas. Our Shaykh is saying, if you want safety, safety doesn't come thinking, I am safe. Who are you to think that? Who are you to think that you are safe? Are you the judge? No. Have you crossed? Have you passed the test? No. You are still in the classroom. You didn't go to pass the test yet. Test. As soon as Azrael is coming, you will see then how he is appearing to you. And if you reach to that station, that you have a little bit of hope, the station of die before you die. The Holy Prophet is saying, the believer will see where he's going before he's passing away from this world. Think on that. Watch what you are doing. Look what you are doing. You enter through one door to this world and you're going out from the other side. In these days, Azrael is coming in so many different ways to unexpected place an unexpected time. Our Shaykh is ordering to us, my murids should not be out. If it's not necessary, if it's not an emergency, they should not be out after the Maghrib time. They should not be out of their houses. They should be staying in their houses after Maghrib time up till morning. They should not be running around in the streets. This is order coming to us from our Shaykh. If you take it seriously, he knows what he's saying. We don't know what he's saying. 
We should sit down, think and try to understand what he's saying, what he means by those words. If we take his orders, his words seriously, then inshallah, we will find safety. If not, you are going to enter into your own grave by yourself. Oh believers, the grave is our destination. We should look at the cemetery and see how small that grave is. We should see that it is our destination and we should run to fill it with good deeds. To do that is intelligence. To neglect it is the worst kind of gufflet. We are living in a time that so many punishments and tests are falling all around us. We should not say, oh, it can never happen to me. We have to say, this could have been me. We have to take the lesson, as our Sheikh said so many times, either take the lesson or you will become the lesson. Only a man with strong faith will take everything to himself and by doing that he becomes more intelligent. And the intelligent man does not leave for tomorrow what he can do today. The early Muslims used to say, beware of delaying your work because it is one of shaitan's strongest weapons. We cannot say we will change later. We have to change now. Azrael is breathing down our neck. If we delay our time, maybe up, and then the book is closed and there is nothing more we can do. Our Shaykh is relating the hadith of the Holy Prophet ﷺ saying, Holy Prophet ﷺ is saying, anyone who believes in Allah and His Prophet, if they die with that faith, they will enter to paradise. And Zayd radiallahu an was asking, Ya Rasulullah, because Hazrat Zayd, he lived a very, very, very clean life, that Sahabi. He has never known anything wrong. He never did anything wrong. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, if they are doing crimes, they are still going to enter to paradise. He said, if they're doing crimes, and if they go out from this world with that shahadat, they are still going to paradise. He was more surprised and said, Ya Rasulullah, if they're doing adultery, they are still going to go to paradise. He said, if they are doing adultery and they are asking forgiveness from Allah and they go out from this world with the shahadat, they are still entering into paradise. He was a little bit more surprised, like he was trying to think, how can it be? And asking more and more, and the Holy Prophet was saying, they will all enter into paradise. Even if Zayd doesn't like it, they are going to enter to paradise. But their paradise will be different from Zayd's paradise. And if we are entering to that fire one minute, one time, it is a trouble. It is a big trouble. By the time you come out of that trouble, it may take centuries. Not one day, not one year, thousands and thousands of years in that fire, in that punishment. Understand that. Which paradise do you want to be in? The paradise of those who did wrong things and they were disobedient? Or the paradise of the friends of Allah and the Sahabis? We must answer that question to ourselves. Be with those who are helping you prepare for death. Be with those who are helping you prepare for ahirat. Shaykh Afendi is saying, people may put you on top of the world, it doesn't matter. Intelligent man is not going to tell you that. The man who's close to Allah is not going to tell you that. The man who's working for the sake of Allah, for the sake of his Prophet, is not going to praise you in this dunya. He's not going to tell you that you're so good. No, he's going to push you always to do better because as soon as you go to the other side, that's what you're going to find. Whatever you built to yourself. Oh believers, in the grave, Everyone is going to ask 
for more time. Those who lived a wrong life, they will say, I wish I could go back so that I can give shahadat and live according to Allah's orders. But even the believers, they may feel regret in their grave. Shah Fendi is saying, the believers are also sorry and they are sad. When they are laying down in their place and they are watching their paradises, and they are seeing higher paradises, they are asking, saying, who does this belong to? How come I didn't reach there? And the angels will say to him, because you were busy with so many malayani, things that don't concern you. You spend your time, your breath of life with nonsense. You just got this paradise. If you were more busy with Allah, made more zikr, gave more salawat to the Holy Prophet ﷺ, you will be reaching to these higher stations. So he will be sorry too, except the salihin, the righteous people and the awliyaullah. O believers, the breath of life is given to us today. We must run today to use it for Allah's sake. We must live our life so that we don't regret in the grave. We are in the greatest days of the year. We should decorate these days by being obedient to Allah with fasting, with being in sohbat, with zikr, with guarding our tongues from malayani. Let us to be in the companionship of those who prepare us for ahirat by making us to get better. Because as Farooq al-Azam radiallahu an had said, the one who brings attention to your faults is your friend. The one who sings your praises is your butcher. We're asking Allah to make us to stay in the company of the true friends. Amen.